Hello everyone, we are still in a stage two for the API Portal Community Chat at API Days. We will have another three great sharings on different topics. Yeah, first of all, we will have Mariuka, founding partners of Osango Limited, who, who is going to give us a talk on planning more steps to data economy using API Ops cycle. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Glad to be here virtually in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, we are in Hong Kong right now, yeah. Okay, it's your time to show us what you prepared. Thank you. So uh, first of all, if I look like I'm really in, a, in pain or something, it's because I had to evacuate myself into another place and I'm, I'm sitting on the floor on my knees. So that's the first problem. But the next problem is that I'm going to talk to you about something that you might be really familiar with um, as a topic, data economy, or it might be totally new to you. But I'm hoping that there are some enthusiastic API Cycles users out there and, and you're going to ask some questions because this is the first time I'm, I'm putting these two uh, together in a presentation. So my name is Mari Panina and I'm founding part of Osango. So physically I'm, I'm in Finland right now and uh, I'm a local organizer of API Days Helsinki and North actually since this year. Uh, we'll have the next Helsinki and North edition in March. And I'm also a member of the API Collective. You may have seen or will see Claire Barrett uh, at this same um, stage a bit later from the API Collective too. And I'm consulting and, and training public sector and private companies around the world. And then uh, also created this API Cycles method together with some other people and co-author of API Economy 101. Uh, Osango is, is a company that, surprisingly to me, while we are a young company, we have been already for the past three years in the top 20 list of API management uh, consulting companies, together with uh, slightly, uh, slightly bigger names like Microsoft, Google, IBM, Salesforce, and a lot of others. Um, and we are basically active in the API scene in a lot of ways, which will I will share you, to you a little bit later. Why I'm talking about the API cycles and data economies is because uh, there is a need to do a lot of things around the world and not just in, in Silicon Valley or France or somewhere else. I know that the, the API scene is starting to really develop in, in Hong Kong and a lot of places in Asia. Uh, and I think that this is really important um, to understand of what makes or breaks the API and the data economy. And that's why I'm, I'm sharing some examples and, and the API of cycles method with you. But first, we'll look at a bit more on the research side of things. So first of all, APIs, whether they are data or other kinds of APIs, they are basically uh, thriving in cultures that where user-centered design is dominant. So where you look at things outside of the company and you think about customer journeys across ecosystems and you think about how different companies, different organizations can actually create those journeys together. And that needs a mindset uh, of marketers and developers to co-create, which is not always the case. Uh, some more info on, on API economy itself uh, is on the online courses in Osango Academy. Uh, you can even go to apijingji.info where we have a Chinese Mandarin simplified Chinese, sorry for Hong Kong Cantonese folks, but uh, a Mandarin Chinese version of the API economic course, which has been created with the university and uh, it's free to go through. And then we have also introduction to data economy, which is created with another university and is also free to do. And, and my, some of my slides are from that course. 
So data economy, what is it actually about? Um, there are some case examples of different industries. Here we have like jet engines, wind farms, uh, traffic, uh, real-time notifications of trains, for example, and, and in general, better allocation of all kinds of resources, and especially in healthcare. And the savings of this or the market uh, impact of this is quite big, potentially, if you do things right. But then we need to start talking about, if we need to commercialize data, we need to start talking about data products. Or, or actually, should we talk about data services? That's a matter of opinion or matter of background or, or like who is talking about it. And data scientists, for example, talk about data products in a slightly different uh, point of view than maybe those that intend to market those data products. And also, if you are from a statistical background, you will think about it slightly differently. So first problem in the space is uh, what are we actually talking about and what is the implication of that? So let's take an example that we could, you know, we could sell an umbrellas, we could sell, sell uh, some actual physical tangible products, but let's assume that we are selling weather data instead. Uh, so you would need the umbrella. So the uh, data economy business model here is kind of raw data or bulk data. And uh, you could share that data across various channels and others could actually then do nice user interfaces or nice interpretations of it. But it's a really easily scalable product compared to, let's say, selling umbrellas. But then if you really, really think about it from a customer-centered view and business model point of view, then, for example, selling ice cream weather has been for many years already uh, a, a great business to some of the weather data companies and, and recently to some of the data platforms. Obviously, you can do other things than just uh, sell ice cream and, or optimize the sales of ice cream with data, but uh, it's a much more specific service and therefore much more valuable and it actually saves time much more or creates new opportunities for the customers. But it's also a bit more difficult to produce, at least in the very beginning, when you try to do the data models and, and maybe you need machine learning algorithms or you need data scientists or other, other people to analyze the data. Uh, so the consumption and, and production of the data products varies depending on what kind of data products they are. Now, data economy business models um, are an interesting thing. We'll, we'll tackle that a bit later. Uh, more about here is the, your traditional business model canvas. And here are some examples of, of the different boxes in the uh, business model canvas and how they relate to data. So in API cycles, we have the same business model canvas for like any kind of API. But if the API happens to be about data, or of course there can be a data product which doesn't have an API, although that shouldn't actually happen uh, a lot of times, but theoretically it's possible. Uh, but from data point of view, these are slightly varied, but still in the same context. But then there's the, okay, this is the business model and this is saying that who, who are we selling for, what value, value proposition, what are the kind of revenue and benefit and cost and all the other stuff that you have in business model. But then there's the kind of production process, which is in the bottom of this slide from capturing data, storing, organizing, analyzing, reporting. And then there's the ecosystem journey of like how the customers perceive the services uh, and the products which use the data from various sources. It might not all be from your organization. Okay, so how do we model that? How do we get to that kind of conclusion that, okay, this is the best way for us? So obviously, in order to build a real ecosystem, and I, I make the argument later why you need an ecosystem for handling data, you have to have the same goal and direction with all the ecosystem parties. Otherwise, it's not really an ecosystem. And so you need to gather around the common value proposition and you need to find out who is best in the ecosystem to do each of these stages or meet each of the needs 
along the way of the customer journey. So instead of companies doing all of this themselves and using only their own data or buying raw data and then analyzing it, you could already use really productized data products via APIs, via productized APIs, and just kind of gather uh, this journey and, and your business could be the customer experience of different users or, or automating or, or easing uh, some processes. Or it could be just the one, one point in the journey. But so this all results into pricing models for data, which you need to find out also as part of the business model. And in the course, in the introduction to data economy, we have a lot of research articles and, and also more slides, more videos and more examples about how uh, these different uh, pricing models and, and different other aspects of the data economy and data business and data products are handled. And so if you want to know details, you can go there. But this talk was about the API cycles being used um, to make or, or break the, the data products. So API cycles is a method which is all about collaboration between business and tech. And it has its roots in lean thinking, lean management. And also uh, it's something that we, we hope, we intend, and, and everybody in, in all the organizations I know that are globally using API cycles have specifically used it so that if they have been successful, that they have the business managers, product managers, uh, developers, architects all around the method and its canvases and, and then uh, creating uh, specifications or creating the business model for the API and data products uh, quite fast. And there are different stage, uh, stages or phases in the cycle model and it has its kind of thinking around DevOps, but it's kind of going beyond DevOps, maybe business DevOps, like Mehdi Mejawi is, is often saying. So you can, you can find the whole method in apofcycles.com, but I'm going to go through a few things here now so that you get some idea. Um, he, the, here's the cycle in a kind of nutshell. So you first start with uh, business model canvas, or actually the journey, the value proposition canvas and business model canvases, they are slightly API-fied. I'll show you examples. And then you move into architecture cycles where you actually start with like minimum viable API architecture. So you prototype first and then you build something that somehow works and then you start to scale uh, after some cycles. So, so you can move through this whole cycle with prototyping only and then uh, iterate. And then you build APIs. This model that our method doesn't actually tell you how you build APIs, uh, but it tells you like what do you what should you consider when building them and specifically helps you to audit the APIs so that they are actually according to good design principles, they are secure, they are manageable with an API management platform and so forth. And they have good developer experience. And then uh, publishing the API, mining the developer experience, monitoring, measuring and analyzing and learning based on the measuring and analyzing what to do next, how to improve. So this is the full cycle which you should iterate with your products. And you can use this for strategic uh, planning for API strategy, data strategy, or just to uh, plan for a one or two or three APIs. Uh, and, and that's usually the best place actually to start even the strategic thinking that you kind of start thinking specific areas of the business and areas that, that need APIs or need improved APIs. And here's the beginning part kind of in a diagram that you would have the customer journey, you would have the, the value proposition identified from gains and pains and features and starting from the customer need or the developer customer need. And then uh, you would think about, okay, these features go together and, and form certain APIs, certain services. Uh, for data and then uh, you would pick them one by one and form the business model and then you would continue to the other phases. So here we have an example of a kind of pizzeria case of value proposition canvas where we have started with the right side of the canvas where we have collected um, things from our customer journey 
And then uh, these are the kind of jobs to be done in a customer journey or tasks. These are more on, on the task side. But then these are the things that a developer who is developing uh, a, a full-on service uh, for this pizzeria case needs. Um, what do they need? What do they value? What do they find useful uh, when they hope that somebody would have an API for this? And what do they fear? What what pains do do they think will happen, and will, which will stop or make it difficult for them to use the API? And then there's the productization side of things. So, okay, these were the needs, but how do we answer to the, these needs, and what needs do we answer to? And some of these needs could be very data centric, while some could be very functional. Uh, so often you will end up with, with both data and functional things there. And here you have a journey described again uh, with specific APIs. This is um, from a kind of retail case uh, where, where you would buy something on an online store. And as you can see, there are actually all these APIs are things where, where you actually need a lot of data to deliver this API. So somebody owns and handles and manages that data that these APIs provide, often in these cases with a machine learning um, aspect. And this is just an example from a healthcare, like actually a pet healthcare case, where there are these different um, parties involved in, in managing the health of, of a pet, for example. And you can see that there are like insurance companies to and, and, and a lot of different healthcare providers and others there uh, that are involved. And the problem here is that, for example, for pet healthcare, the data doesn't travel. In many countries, at least, the data doesn't travel. Humans, healthcare data often already travels across these operators, but pet data doesn't fly so often. And we had a customer case where we actually helped a platform that was dealing with this problem. Now, this is another example. Um, so we'll start from the kind of top that this, uh, this was uh, from Finland, actually, uh, an example from last year, where the whole water services ecosystem was actually thinking about digitalization. And uh, they were thinking that, hey, well, we have the water and then we have, you know, consumption data and invoicing data and so forth. And our customers seem to want to have that data from some kind of a digital service. So let's build an app. And uh, then when we actually went through these stages and used also this API cycles method and a few others, we, we came to the conclusion that, hey, have you thought about this through? We could actually, if the strategy was actually that we can provide uh, enough and safe utilities, so energy, day, uh, water and, and gas and other things, with data, so the utilities themselves and the data in an API-driven part of the ecosystem. So wouldn't this be cool? And then we could cater all these uh, stakeholders that have actually wanted your data so far. So public data and, and interfaces and, um, sorry, and they're like public sector partners, there are or private sector partners, and, and all kinds of other regulatory uh, bodies and so forth. And the tech, like they were approaching things from a technical perspective, and that's usually the easy thing, thing to handle, but only when you actually know what the business case is and what the impact of that is. Because when you deal with data, then uh, you have to actually suddenly deal with the ownership and, and uh, centralized or decentralized government things or, or corporate governance things. And you need to actually mind the political goals because data is often related to all kinds of political goals or other kind of bigger uh, perspective things. So these all need to be minded. And, and that's where the APAP cycles is trying to help too, to kind of think about the ecosystem, think about the journeys and think about pieces. So, so that you don't need to solve the whole problem at once, but you can concentrate on the area where your organization is the best uh, to work and, and figure out how to work with the others. So with the water services, 
the, the whole thing was concentrating on collecting consumption data. That was the bigger thing. And all the other things could be actually outsourced or in, uh, handled internally, but the data handling uh, could be actually handled also by potential partners, uh, while there were all, all kinds of potential customers for the data, if they were just thinking about it from an API and data product point of view, not an app and user interface point of view. So there, there are different things. So here we have some building and construction cases, and we were mapping this out, and we were coming to this value prop uh, kind of discussions and, and modeling with the API value proposition canvas. And then we found out that, okay, actually there are some services that are missing from most of the water services providers, but some were already dealt with and integrated to other places. And there were data hubs forming uh, around some of the services. And then we came up with the, the business model for specifically the water consumption and data uh, gathering related to that and, and all the details uh, that you can see here, which I'm not going to go through now, but there are different considerations from different parties that are easier to discuss around these kind of canvases. There are more in the method there. And you can look more, up more information in apsarbicals.com and Osango Academy. And if you need any consulting or other help or training, we are happy to help you in the API Collective. Or uh, and, and then one key thing is that there is a, a doctoral thesis uh, provider who is actually eager to have a few case study partners with data products, uh, if possible. So contact me if you're interested, and that's going to be free. So that's all, folks, from me. OK, thanks for your sharing. Yeah. We know that uh, the API Ops cycle is a cooperation between the, let's say, the business party and the technical parties. Uh, for I, in my mind, for the API product manager and the developer, they should know what the API is. But how about the business owner? In general, they don't have any, uh, don't have much knowledge of the API. They are yeah. just the SME for the business process. How and what you suggested to do with the business owner to absorb the debt? Uh, the API ops. Yeah, it's basically that uh, the reason why we chose the business model canvas and the value prop canvas and the customer journey in the beginning and modified them slightly for the API use case. Um, and in my experience, when facilitated correctly <laughs> and talking from business point of view, they those methods and those canvases really help and the, the instructions going with the canvases really help. Uh, and then, but it needs to be a kind of a joint discussion. So mm. I've killed uh, as many kind of ideas for APIs or uh, plans for business strategy with the canvases as I have helped uh, create. Because often in that couple of hours with the right people around the canvas, uh, in a focus discussion, you can actually find out that this is not feasible or it needs to be changed or actually these are not at all the customer segments that we should cater for. We can actually cater these other ones better with this plan. And so be, be aware that in the best uh, situation, it can actually change your business strategy a bit, um, which is not easy sometimes, but it's feasible and possible with this. Okay, yeah. Thanks to share this new concept. Okay, so the new concept for us to know more about the API ops. Thanks for sharing today. Okay, I'll post some links in the chat so it's easier for people to go there. So, thanks. Yes, thanks. Yeah, all of us can uh, look at the, the, the more information in the stage chat. And if you have any question about uh, the topics yeah. today you can ask it in the chat also yeah i'll stay a bit for answering if there are any questions okay thank you